Hi there, now regular viewers of my RC model reviews channel will know that I have these scales from hell, the lottery scales, uh, which are a very cheap product, and like most cheap products made in China, that's pretty, that's not really relevant, but it's just the fact that it's very cheap scales, and they don't work well at all. Now they're supposed to be, um, what have they got, capacity of 7 kilograms, it says 7 kilograms, and 1 gram increments. So let's uh, see what they look, they work like, there we go, turn it on, that looks alright doesn't it, that looks fine, 0 grams, hey look, Nice and steady. Let's put something on here. A little bit of weight. 136, 137. So it's yeah, 136 and a half. You might think, okay, we'll just leave it for a few minutes and see what happens. It's, it's still happily switching between 136, 137. I'll take that weight off. And oh, look, they're working perfectly. This is Murphy. Oh no, look, two grams. Minus two grams actually. Murphy's law is striking. I'll put that. See, I just. Oh, no. and people say, hey, it's, you're waving your hands. Well, it's not. Look, yeah, I'm waving my hand. Well, see. That's not affecting the readings. Um, I'll zero it again, and it goes back to two. So I'll zero it again, and it's steady for the time being. Let's put that weight back on there and see what happens. Now 136, 135, zero. See, I mean, they're behaving themselves at the moment. I just can't understand, but regardless of that, let's have a little, oh, it went to two. Let's have a little look at what's inside these scales and see whether they really live up to the claims of seven kilograms in one gram increment, increments. See if they actually are what they say they are. And to do that, we're going to have to take the back off. So, uh, let's go Phillips screws by the look of it. We'll try and do this nice and quickly. Don't want to waste your time on this YouTube video. Um, these are just self-tappers into plastic. There's no brass inserts as you get with quality gear. But hey, I think these were about 10 bucks or something. So, I'm not going to grizzle. You get what you pay for quite often in this world. So, here we go. There's the... No, there's probably another screw. When you see, just a little tip, when you see a sticker on the back of something like this, usually there's a screw or something hidden underneath it. Oh, look at that, two screws under there. So whenever you see, there, nah, that's it. Actually, I'll peel this right off. What have we got? There's some screws up the top too. There's a couple of screws in here and a couple of screws in there. Um, if I can see in the side, excuse me while I take, try and take a little peek through here, because I can't actually lift it off without removing that top piece there. So I think if I undo this piece then the whole top will come away let's have a look and find out and these are bolts they're long bolts actually look at that quite long bolts they go into something that's obviously threaded inside the scales will i ever go back together after this i don't know does it matter look here we go now this piece comes off nicely look at that and here we can see what you get for your money now obviously I'm looking at this is going to be a pain and these the wires are not actually Plugged, they just solder directly onto the circuit board here. So I'll lay it open like this. And let's take a closer look at what we've got inside this little baby. Now, the heart of any set of scales is what they call the load cell. That's this, this little thing here. It varies its uh, resistance based on the amount of stress that's applied to it. So generally, you, you securely mount one end and you put the load on the other end. And as this bends, the resistance changes. And the little wires out here can measure the resistance. Now, remember on the front of the scales, oh, it's turned on. Turn it off. Come on, turn off. Go on, there we go. On the front of the scales here, I'll bring it into shot, you can see that it says this thing has a capacity of 7,000 grams. That's 7 kilograms. And of course, manufacturers of cheap products would never lie, would they? But if we take a look at the load cell, you can see the load cell says 5 kilograms. <laughs> 5 kilograms on the load cell. So, yeah, it's not quite what they claim it to be. Now let's take a look at the circuit board that's... Uh, does the display, you can see if I turn this over, we've got the display here on the other side. There is just a simple circuit board and that board is held in by two screws. What a, what a luxury to have so many screws holding the circuit board in. Again, these just go straight into plastic as you would expect from a cheap set of scales. And sorry my hand's in the way for most of this, but angles are really hard to work with the, with the camera when you're trying to do this sort of thing. Now, as I said, the wires don't plug in, they just sold it on, you know. Uh, there's a little, uh, there's this little blob here. Now this is what they call a chip on board. What it means is instead of having a little integrated circuit with legs like this, they simply stick the, the chip to the board and then bond some little wires on quite often. So it's like, you know, save yourself a couple of dollars or, or a couple of cents on a plastic pack and it speeds up the production. So yeah, it's built to a price. And if we turn this over, we don't actually get to see much at all. It's just an LCD display as you might expect. Is there anything under there? There's nothing, nothing under there, just a little piece of foam rubber. And so I'll put that back. Um, yep, that's really nothing to write home about at all, but not unexpected. 
So what would cause these scales to be as erratic and crappy as they are? Well, I don't know, it's probably this load cell. It's probably cheap as beans. You know, it's just, may even be a reject from some other production line. Who knows, maybe it didn't pass muster. So they thought, ah, we'll make a whole lot of scales using the crappy bits that don't work in the real scales. And so that's what they've done. Now, I could do more on load cells, how they work, but basically temperature shouldn't be a factor because they have a bridge in here. It's basically a set of resistors that balance each other out. So as the temperature rises, then they still send out the same value of of resistance as they would do if the temperature was the same so meh, i don't know um let's actually unscrew this from the surface of the plastic make sure that there's nothing uh, perhaps in terms of the mounting that's the problem you never know could be the way it's mounted might be a bit of stuff under there or something no nothing so there's our load cell our simple simple load cell and as you can see there's this silicon here covers up the active elements is on some on that side some on that side and in fact, this one looks pretty, yeah. Yep, yeah, they probably have a couple of little load, load sensor resistors on there. And as this bends, as, you can't see it bend, of course, because there's a hell of a lot of strength in there. But it's just the slightest deflection causes the resistor on this side perhaps to increase in value, and the one on this side to decrease in value because a strain gauge, which is um, possibly what they're using here, strain gauge works because as you increase the length of it, the resistance goes up. And as you decrease the length of it, the resistance goes down. So here, if we have a strain gauge there and a strain gauge there, as we try and bend this, this will microscopically increase in length, that will microscopically reduce in length. Yeah, simple as. That's how some of them work anyway. And yeah, the reason we have four wires is because we have a bridge in here. And sometimes they even have a little low noise amplifier in there because the signal from this, the resistance change is so very small, sometimes you have to amplify it before you send it down wires or it just gets too much noise picked up from the, the ether around us, the radio transmissions, and all sorts of other sources of noise that would swamp the small changes, I don't know in this case. Right, so I've put it all back together, there it is, and it's still flaky as it was sitting on zero, then it went to two. Yeah, maybe it's a little better, I don't know. Look at that, it's staying at zero for quite a while now. Oh, there it goes, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, but let's check out that claim that it goes to seven kilograms. Now the load cell was rated to five kilograms, 5,000 grams, so let's put a whole lot of weight on here and see what happens when we get enough. So we two, three, four, five, six. it does go over six, and then it goes ee, just like Jimmy Olsen's watching Superman. Um, so yeah, it's the not the load cell that's limiting it, but the internal electronics as we get up to six, nine, seven, just went over seven, went to about 710. So why would they use, a, why would a five kg load cell work at seven kilograms? Well, probably because when they spec the load cells, they, they're linear. That means they have a predictable progressive um, pattern of change up to a certain figure. And that figure in this case is five kilograms. So this will work up to seven kgs, but it's probably not gonna be as accurate when it gets past five kgs as it should be. So yeah, it's again, it's using something cheaper. If they, they could have limited this to be a, a five kg scale with better accuracy, or well, they can go to seven kgs as a selling feature. And who cares when you get over five kg if it's a few tens of grams out, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But there you go, I'm actually surprised. Now, when I put this back together, I noticed there was a potential for wires to actually get sort of caught between the load cell and the uh, frame of the thing. So I'm wondering whether in re reassembling it properly, making sure the wires are well clear, whether I might have fixed these scales because look, they, well, they're two grams, two, three, uh, maybe not, I don't know, I give up. <laughs> These scales, uh, I'm gonna go out and buy some good scales. Anyone got any recommendations for good scales? I'm happy to spend a fortune, maybe even five bucks, but they have to be good. I'm not gonna waste money on trash like this anymore. Anyway, there you go, thank you for watching. If you've got questions, stick them on the bottom of the video, I'll do my best to answer them. And yes, I will be disposing of these scales in the most spectacular way I can think of. People have said, hey, drop them from a quadcopter. And maybe I will, it'll be an interesting project. Maybe we'll haul these things up to 399 feet, the legal maximum allowed in this country. And then we will let them glide gently to the ground and see what happens when they reach it. Thanks for watching, see you again soon guys.